Welcome to part two of the Real Streaming Media video series, Creating Content. The other videos in this series are available by clicking on the video links in the right-hand side of this presentation. This video shows you how to create the best original content for streaming media. To produce the highest quality streaming media files, you should strive for broadcast quality. This means utilizing the tools and techniques that have been developed over the years in the radio and television industries. When producing original audio content, be sure to use a good quality microphone. Now, there are several different types of microphones available. Use a clip-on or lavalier mic for interview content. A good quality handheld mic is perfect for reporting and for outdoor environments. You can also use a shotgun mic pointed directly at the talent if the other two types of mic are impractical. It's usually best not to use the microphone that's built into many cameras these days. They're generally low quality and more importantly they employ automatic gain control or AGC. Now, AGC is used to capture all of the audio in a room, both in front of and behind the camera. This is fine if you're capturing your daughter's birthday party, but a disaster if you're trying to record your CEO's company address. You want to record what the on-camera talent is saying <clears throat> and nothing else. There are also advanced audio processing techniques available in hardware and software, such as EQ and compression, that you can use to optimize your audio signal. However, as long as you use a good quality microphone aimed directly at the talent, you can produce entirely acceptable streaming media files. When it comes to producing video, here are some things to consider. Video files are much larger than audio files, so the encoding software must drastically reduce the size of the raw video file. Real Producer achieves this by encoding only the objects that are moving inside a video frame. If relatively few objects are moving, then the encoder can keep the frame rate high and the picture sharp. If, however, there's a lot of motion in the frame, the encoder will degrade the image to achieve the required data rate. Here's a simple demonstration. Right now, I'm not moving too much, and the encoded file looks good. But watch what happens when I suddenly move my arms. The frame rate stutters, and the picture quality degrades noticeably. The lesson here is that unnecessary motion is bad. Now, you can avoid unnecessary motion in a number of ways. First and foremost, use a tripod. Now, handheld footage is great for that gritty reality TV feel, but terrible for streaming media. Think about it. The camera is always moving ever so slightly, which means the entire frame is constantly changing. Well, this forces the encoder to lower the frame rate and degrade each and every frame of your video. Another thing to avoid is complex transitions. Not only do they look silly, but they drive encoders crazy. To prove it, we'll insert a dumb transition right here. See? Looked bad. That's because they're a bad idea. Another thing is to try and keep the number of edits to a minimum. A simple guideline is to leave at least 10 seconds between each edit. And since the eventual screen size of your streaming media file is bound to be smaller than a TV screen, you should consider framing your subject a little bit tighter than usual. This helps ensure that even if the screen size is reduced, the content will look nice. And as with audio production, good equipment will improve your video quality. Plan on buying a good quality DV camera with a FireWire output. As mentioned earlier, a good quality tripod should be high on your list. And since video quality is entirely dependent on light, you should consider buying a small lighting kit. A small lighting kit allows you control over the light, which is crucial because lighting problems are nearly impossible to fix later on. Last but not least, you can buy filters for your camera to improve the quality of your video. 
Filters are available for outside use, for use under fluorescent lights, and to soften the image for a more film-like look. Using filters can help make your video look more professional. Once you've assembled the right tools and shot and edited your video, you're ready to move on to the next step, where you'll encode your content and make it available to your audience. You can watch the next video in this series, Part 3, Encoding and Authoring, by clicking on the link to the right. Or, if you'd like more information about Real Products, you can click on any of the more information links.